Hey guys, Drew here with Up Top Overland. Wanted to take a moment today to go over how to install our Bravo EX. We appreciate you guys watching this video. In this video, we're gonna go over everything that it takes to install not only a Bravo EX, but EXs of all models. We're also gonna go over what major components are gonna come in this and how you can connect this to a fiberglass, aluminum, or stainless steel camper shell that you may already have on your vehicle. In today's video, we're gonna be doing this on a second gen Tacoma with an ATC fiberglass camper shell that already has Rhino Rack tracks pre-installed. If you do not have Thule, Yakima, or Rhino Rack tracks pre-installed to the camper shell that's on your vehicle, you need to stop watching this video right now and contact your local topper dealer to have those installed. They are going to be essential for this installation and we do not recommend that you static mount these by drilling through the camper shell shell. Again, make sure that you have those tracks. With all that being said, I'm going to go over the major components that is going to come in this kit. Like I said, today we're installing a Bravo. However, the assembly of a Bravo and an Alpha is going to be generally the same. Additionally, this is not just for a Tacoma like I have behind me. This is also going to go over Ram 1500, F-250, Chevy Colorado, any vehicle that has a fiberglass or stainless steel camper shell with your tracks pre-installed, this video is going to cover how to install our EX series to a cap with rails. So to start here, we have our Bravo sides. There are two sides. They're currently just banded together with some plastic. Um, but these are going to be our 3 16 inch aluminum sides. You have a driver and a passenger. If you have an Alpha, you're going to technically have four sides. You're going to have a driver and passenger, armor and groove tech. So armor per side, groove tech per side, two times two equals four. Um, but again, we're installing the Bravo today, so I only have these two panels. You're also going to get your feet. You have your steel base part one, your steel base part two. I'm going to go over how those go together. And then you also have your load bar wings as well, which are going to connect to the base and then ultimately to your load bar. So you can mount these from your track that's on the camper shell to the load bars that's actually on the rack itself. Not pictured in this table here is the load bars. Load bars are going to vary both in length and in quantity depending on whether you picked a short bed or a long bed or a Ram 2500 or a Toyota Tacoma. In today's video we're going to be using seven 50 inch load bars because that's what the Tacoma short bed comes with. However, your quantity of load bars and length may vary. Then you're going to have your hardware. Uh, you're going to have three bags of spacers. These are all various lengths. We'll go over what these are used for here in a minute. You're going to have a bag of fender washers and nylock nuts to connect the bases to one another and the wings to the bases as well. You're also going to have your load bar hardware and then the hardware that actually connects the load bars to the wings. You're going to have some three hole black slides in here and then a variety of lock nuts, bolts and flat washers as well. And then lastly, you'll have some square nuts that are going to go into those tracks that you have pre-installed on your roof. Next, we're going to go over how to assemble these feet because we're going to pre-assemble these and then we'll go over how to assemble the rack and then mate those two so we can actually get this on the vehicle of the truck. Okay, now that we've gone over all of the major components that are going to come with your EX, I'm going to show you how to turn all of these items into one complete foot assembly. This is what we are ultimately looking for here. We have our base, the top of our base, and then we also have the wing that's going to connect to the load bars. You can see there's obviously some hardware holding all of this together. All of that hardware is also in this pile, so I'm gonna show you how all of this goes together. Um, what we're actually gonna start with here is our 5 8 quarter 20 bolts. We want to get our Vibratite VC3 thread locker on these bolts. Um, what we're looking to do here is add a layer of this red VC3 here to about the last five or six threads. We generally get it pretty globby on one bolt and then we actually just uh, swirl it around the second one. And as you ring them around each other, they actually will just coat themselves evenly. You want to do this step first because this is actually going to help you um, give it time to dry. This thread locker does come out much like a liquid, but after about 10 to 15 minutes, it's gonna dry to be kind of more like a rubber cement. 
Uh, that's the texture we're looking for. If it's still wet and stringy, it's not ready to be installed. Whereas if it has a bit of a gummy texture to it, you're going to be good to go ahead and thread it into the T-nuts that we'll be using as well. While I let that dry, I'm gonna go ahead and put my little wing over here because I don't need that quite yet. And I'm going to take the first section of the base. So this is the lower base. It has two PIM studs that are sticking out of it. These are M6. There's also two holes here that are quarter 20 as well. These holes are what we're gonna throw our hardware through to actually secure this base to the track itself. And then these studs are here to accept the upper section of the base. The upper section of the base has two quarter inch holes as well, but also has one really big hole here in the middle. And then it has a 90 degree bend with a PIM stud sticking outwards. So what we're actually doing here is we're just gonna throw those over the studs. And you can see these are pretty long here. The reason these are left at the length that they are is because we also provide you three different lengths of spacers. We have an eighth, a 3 16 and a half. You can use one of these heights. You can use the eighth and the 3 16 stack or the 3 16 and the half inch stack. As long as you have enough thread here to get both your washer and your nylock onto the stud, you can stack as many spacers as you need in order to get the height that's desired to either clear the cab or get something that's relatively close to a rack that you may have installed on the roof of the vehicle. So as you can see here, all I'm doing is I'm throwing my fender washers and the nylocks that are provided, and I'm just gonna get these finger tight. This gives us you know, enough thread to hold everything together but it's not going to be rigid that's gonna make it hard to install. So you can see there's some travel here. Right now I'm installing no spacers because we wanna to try to keep this rack as low as we can for this vehicle since we're not matching the height of an actual rack on the cab. But just so you know, you can go ahead and pre-install your spacers at this time or you can do it once we get it on the truck. It's entirely up to you. Once I have these two, the upper and the lower base together, I'm going to flip it around so that stud is facing away from me and then I'm going to put my wing so it's facing off to my left hand side. I've got this in my left hand now. Then I'm going to take the washer, I'm going to put it over this stud and then once again just put that nylock on and we're going to get that finger tight just so the nylock starts to bite. That way this isn't going to fall off. As you can see it's still allowing for articulation. And the reason that this is designed this way is some of your rails from Thule, Yakima, Rhinorak, whatever you might have installed on your cap, they're not always gonna be sitting parallel to the ground. They may be off at an angle, 10 to 15 degrees, one direction or another. And if it's not completely flat like this table and it's off at an angle, this is going to allow the base to swivel so you can get a good secure mount to the actual cap of the track or the cap track as well but you're also going to be able to have your load bars still sitting level without any hardware being risked of cross threads or anything like that. So again, what we're trying to do is get this full complete assembly. So now that we have the two base pieces in the wing together, we're going to turn our attention to the three hole T-nut on our hardware that we have sitting left over here. Um, I'm probably rushing this a little bit, like I said, this needs about 10 to 15 minutes to dry. I've only been yammering for about four, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and use this anyway. So we take our 5 8 bolt. This is a quarter 20 thread pitch. We're gonna go ahead and put a lock washer on it. And then we're gonna put a flat washer on it. The order in which you put this together is very, very important. You want to take your bolt and put it through the wing slot right here on the side that has the studs sticking to the sky. So we're gonna put that through here. And then for this T-nut, there are some protrusions on the back side of it. And we want those to also face away from this two PIM, sti uh, two PIM stud side. And what we're gonna do is just get a first turn and a half or so tightened on this guy, because we wanna keep this loose so we can actually slide the load bar through here. So again, that process looks like bolt, lock washer, flat washer. We're gonna come in from the two stud side. We're gonna go through that slot, and then we're going to go ahead and thread this into our next hole. Just about a turn, turn and a half. That way we've got enough thread that it's not gonna fall out, but we've got you know it loose enough so we can actually side the load bar through. One more time, bolt, lock washer, 
flat washer, two stud side, and then we're going to slide that through the slot in the wing one more time. And we're just gonna get a turn or so, turn and a half into our T-nut. And this is a complete assembly. I now have two of these. I need to repeat that process uh, two more times. This kit has a total of four feet. And then we're actually gonna jump up to the truck, get the bases installed to the tracks. And then from there, we'll actually go ahead and load the load bar set. At this point, I have all four feet assembled and ready to go on the truck. The only step that we need to do here quickly is we need to put our VC3 on the bolts that are actually gonna go into the pre-installed Thule, Yakima, or Rhino Rack tracks that exist on your topper. So what bag I'll be looking for here is gonna have some square nuts that actually go into the track themselves. There's also gonna be, again, fender washers, lock washers, and then we're going to have some M6 hardware in here. I'm just going to sort out the bolts that I need. I'm gonna just push all that other hardware to the side for a second. I don't need to put VC3 on anything but the threads of these bolts. And much like you did for the feet, all we're looking to do here is a layer on the last five or six threads. So we get a decent glob on one of the bolts here. And then we just do a little bit of a ring around the rosy so we can get a good even coating. And if you're using this stuff, do it on a surface that you don't care about. Um, you can reuse these bags because this VC3 is much like a rubber glue and it's, it's going to run a little bit. So you can see that this table's seen its, uh, its thread locker days, so we don't care about it too much, but I did not recommend doing this on your granite countertops or your mom's kitchen table. And ultimately, we only need to do this to eight bolts each foot takes two bolts however we do provide you additional hardware that way when you drop it like i inevitably will at some point in this video you have one extra to go for so i'm going to go ahead and coat that last one as well just so it's ready for when i mess up all right i'm going to go ahead and let those sit there um, we're going to go ahead and take these square nuts next and load them into the track we're going to have to put four per track uh, you'll basically have two in each corner is kind of the easiest way to think about it. So we'll go ahead and do that next while we let our Vibratite cure on our M6 bolts. And then we'll go ahead and get the feet on the actual truck itself and show you what we need to do uh, to get the load bars ready for it next. Okay, we're now up on the vehicle. We are looking at the back of the rail. We're using Rhino Rack rails on this install and they actually have a pre-machined slot so we can just drop our little slide nuts in. However, if you're using a Thule or a Yakima track system, it's more than likely you're going to have to take this end cap off. Take a look at the track and see if the hardware is either on the top or the bottom. Sometimes they'll thread from different locations and you're gonna have to take this cap off and actually load these slide nuts in from the end. If you're using a Rhino Rack system, it's gonna look just like this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop these in with the wide side running across the vehicle. That way you get the most amount of bite. I'm gonna go ahead and put two in here and I'm gonna slide them all the way to the front of the truck. And then I'm gonna put two more in here and I'm just gonna slide them right here. We wanna to try to get the feet as wide as we possibly can to provide the best stance for this rack and therefore the most stability. I've done this here on the passenger side, repeat the process on the driver's side, and then from there, we'll be ready to go ahead and install the actual feet that we pre-assembled on the table earlier to the rails themselves, and then load bars will be next. Now that we have the slide nuts loaded in place on both sides of the vehicle, we're gonna use that M6 hardware that we just put the VC3 thread locker on, and then the lock washers and the fender washers, they were also in the bag with your rectangular slide nuts. I've also went ahead and grabbed one of my complete foot assemblies so we can show you how this whole process goes together. So much like we did with the bolts up here, we need to go ahead and take a bolt, put a lock washer on it, another fender washer. We're gonna do that process two times per foot. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those both ready. And then from here, I've got the slide nuts kind of where I think they need to be in place. All I'm gonna do is take the foot, I'm gonna put it on the track and it's important that this wing here faces the inside of the vehicle. So you want this pointing to the opposite side. Right now I'm standing on the passenger side. This wing is pointing to the driver's side. On the driver's side, you would want it to point to the passenger side. 
At this point, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and line up this hole here with one of the slide nuts that I have down below. And I'm just going to drop that through. And I'm going to thread that here by hand till I feel one of those threads catch. And then I'm going to take a four millimeter Allen because this is metric hardware. And I'm just going to get a couple of turns on here just until the bolt head touches the lock washer. We don't want to tighten this down because we're going to have to do some forward and backwards adjustability. In that instance, we also need to adjust this back here because I didn't have the spacing quite right. So I can go ahead and get that hole lined up over my other track nut. And then all we're going to do here is just, again, hand thread. And then I'll take my wrench and I'll get a couple more turns. I'm going to repeat that process one more, si one more time just like this on the passenger side. Then I'm going to hop over to the driver's side and do it again two more times. And all we're looking for is this wing is facing the inside of the vehicle itself. It is important to note that all of these feet are laid out the same. So when you go to put this together, this wing will be on the back of the load bar on the passenger side. It'll be the exact opposite. It's gonna be on the front of the load bar on the driver's side, just based off how everything is laid out. So this sitting like this is perfect. We're gonna go ahead and repeat that process three more times, and then we'll be ready for our load bars. I have all four feet installed to the tracks loosely so I can move them back and forth. Obviously the foot assembly is complete. We did that a little bit earlier. And I've gone ahead and pulled a load bar up on the roof here with me so we can next get the load bars actually installed to the slides. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our provided load bar. I'm going to push out on the hardware to make sure that this threaded insert is as far out as possible. And I'm just going to slide that bar through the actual threaded insert itself. I'm gonna gently set this in place. I'm gonna walk around to the other side. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pick up on my wing on this side and do the exact opposite. I'm gonna go ahead and just pull this one into place here. And again, these feet are gonna be opposite of one another. So this side, the driver's side, is on the front of the load bar. The passenger side I was just on is on the back of the load bar. And we're gonna pull this through to get it kind of roughly where we want it to be. And we can just let that sit here loose. I'm gonna go ahead and do that again for the front load bar. And then from there, we can actually go ahead and start to tighten down some of the hardware that's on our feet, but we're still going to leave the forward and backward adjustability so we can connect our sides. Okay, I've got front and rear load bars loosely in place. I'm gonna go grab a couple tools. I'll be right back so we can talk about what we need to tighten down here so we can go ahead and start to get a little bit more rigidity out of this system. I have the load bars slid into the feet, but as you can see, the feet are still very loose. That's what we're gonna tackle next. I'm gonna need a socket and a 10 millimeter. I'm gonna go ahead and get that connected. And because I'm not using any spacers here, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these two nylocks the whole way down. All right, got the first one down. I'm gonna go ahead and do that process one more time here. I have both of these down and snug. You do not have to put the farm arm on these. We will provide you torque specs for all fasteners at the end of this video. All I have done is make sure that these two basically cannot wiggle apart from each other. The next thing we need to address is the stud that's right here underneath of the load bar that is more or less responsible for pinning our wing in place. At this point, I'm actually going to use a short extension so I have a little bit better access here under the load bar. And then I'm just going to reach through. And again, this is a 10 mil. And all we wanna do is snug this up. This one you actually wanna leave just tight enough that you can still move the wing back and forth because we're gonna to have to do some adjustment here in these load bars next. But let's go ahead and get this snug down just to the point where we can move that, but it doesn't freely float. And now that I've got all of these tight but in place the way that I need them. I'm gonna go repeat that process on the remaining three feet and then we're gonna work on getting our load bars centered from left to right. In order to get an accurate measurement for the load bar left to right, I'm gonna go ahead and just temporarily snug these two bolts so we can actually connect the foot to the rail. This is going to allow us to just get a bit of a better measurement to see how far we need to take these bars one side to the other. 
And again, I'm not tightening these the whole way down. I just want to make it so the foot isn't going to move. I'm going to repeat that process on the other side so we can go ahead and start the measuring and figure out where this bar needs to actually be. Now that we have the feet snug to the rail so we can get an accurate measurement, we have some adjustability in the load bar back and forth, and we need to make sure we take accurate measurements to ensure that this is centered on the truck. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull a measurement from the end of the bar to the point here that's on this wing. And I have seven and a quarter. Nine and eight. Nine and eight, so we gotta go my way here. Once we do that, we'll get another measurement. Right at eight, just to see. Okay, he's at eight. I am at eight and a half, so I'm just gonna scooch it over here about a quarter of an inch. That gets us to eight and a quarter on my side. Should be about the same for him. Yep. Your measurements are gonna change from vehicle to vehicle, but once you have this in place, just hold the load bar there, and then you're gonna use a 5 30 seconds Allen, and we can just go ahead and get these bolts tight. As you get this one tightened down, go ahead and lift up on the bar so we can get this top edge to sit flush with the bar itself. I've gone ahead and pinned this one down on the end, and then I'm just gonna tilt my wing in. That's why we're leaving it a little loose here. Again, trying to get everything flush, and then I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this outside bolt as well. If you're doing this by yourself, you're gonna to have to walk and back, you're gonna to have to walk back and forth around the vehicle a couple times. Your measurements will probably be different from ours, but as long as they're even from side to side, you're good to go. Once you have that, you can just go ahead and tighten everything down that you need. And then from there, we will actually go ahead and loosen back up the feet that we connected to the rails and then we'll start hanging our sides. Now that this bar is tight, I'm gonna go do it again on the rear bar. Then we'll come back, we'll loosen up these feet and we'll go ahead and hang those sides. Okay, all of the hardware connecting the wings to the load bars is tight. I've gone back and I've loosened up the hardware that connects the feet to the actual rails. So I have adjustment in my load bars and I've gone ahead and grabbed one of the sides for this Bravo rack and a couple of bolts. These bolts came out of the load bar bag. They are one quarter 20, they're one inch long. You're going to need to put a lock washer and a lock washer only on all of these bolts. Right now I only have four on the roof because I'm actually just trying to get this side hung. That way we can go back to the other side and then we'll tighten everything down so we can fill in our load bars. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take two of these. I'm gonna stage them on the bar where I'm going to need them. And then in most instances, you're gonna wanna mount to the second load bar and the second to last load bar. The front and the rear most load bars, they can float. They don't need feet to attach them. This is gonna give you a good even spread for everything that you go down. If your tracks are not long enough to allow to mount the bars this wide, just pick the bars that will allow you to mount this as wide as you possibly can. If that's three and six, that's completely fine. Wherever it falls, you just wanna to try to get your actual stance of your feet as wide as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead, and pull this over here. I'm gonna use one of those one quarter 20s and I am going to just get this hand threaded here. Take your time threading these in. Don't wanna drop them, it's a long way down. I've got those first two in. I'm gonna go ahead and slide this load bar forward. That's gonna help me out. And then I'm gonna actually go ahead and move this load bar back a bit. So I'm at a point now where I actually can't get into the second and the second to last. So I'm gonna scooch this bar up a little bit. And I'm gonna pull back on this guy. And then I'll just go ahead and get this threaded in the way that I need. Again, just hand tight on these. We're gonna have to do some adjustment here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get that hung in place. I'm gonna repeat this process on the other side and then we'll work to get these as wide as we can in the actual rack itself. And then we'll go ahead and adjust the front to rear. So I've gone ahead and hung the other side. I've got both sides loosely connected to the load bars here. Now it's time to try to get this as wide as we possibly can. As you guys saw, I wasn't able to use that second to last slot, so I'm using the third to last, or I guess the fourth slot from the front if you wanna look at it that way. And then I'm also using the second slot from the front. So 
We're gonna go ahead and spread these apart. And what I'm actually doing here is I'm just trying to get it as wide as I can in the rack since I can't go to the actual second to last load bar. Once I've spread it as wide as I can here, I'm gonna go ahead and just tighten these bolts in place. These are gonna end up being fixed positions because this is what your feet are mounting to the load bar and then the load bars to the rack. So these load bars will not be movable. However, the load bars everywhere else will be movable within these slots and we'll get those in here in just a second. But I've got the rear load bar pushed as far back in the slot as I can and I have the front load bar pushed as far forward as I can. And then again, all we're doing here is getting these snug so nothing can move. And then once you have those nice and snug in place, we can hop over and do this same process on the other side. It's imperative that you guys make sure that the load bars are in the same spot in the slot from left side to right side. That way you can ensure that the rack is actually square. So this front load bar needs to be all the way forward. The rear load bar needs to be all the way back. And that's just in my instance. If it's a little bit different for you guys because you're working on a Chevy Silverado or a Ram 2500, that's just fine. You just only need to make sure that these guys are even from side to side. That is all we're going for right now. Now that I have the hardware tight to the load bars connecting these sides, everything is square. I'm actually going to go ahead and step off of the stool that I'm standing on right now and I'm just going to look at the vehicle. What we're going to do now is adjust our front to back and make sure that the sides that are on this are where we want them to be on the cap. Because you're installing these to tracks, you can go forward and backwards, which is why we loosened these feet just a few steps ago. So I'm gonna take a look at it. I'm gonna get it where I like it. And then from there, tighten this down, and then we can start putting in our other load bars, and then we'll be done. All right, now that I have this hardware right here, fully tightening the feet to the rails, and I can actually go ahead and start to load all of these additional load bars in. We're going to be using a 5.30 seconds Allen to connect those button heads to the slots that exist on the sides. Once we have all of our load bars in, we're just going to go back and torque everything to spec, and then we are done with the installation of our EX system from up top overland. I've gone ahead and put all my load bars in the rough position I'm going to need them, and I've got all my hardware ready to go as well. What we can do is just kind of let these load bars sit where they are, and then all we really need to do is just push it in here, and then we're going to go ahead and start to thread our hardware in. We'll just let the one side drape, it's really not an issue. Then we'll just go ahead and finger tighten everything. And then we can go ahead and start to work the load bars in place. As I'm getting all of these in place and letting them rest, you can actually go ahead and tighten them down fully on one side. That's not a problem. It is important that, like I said earlier, you're just making sure that when you go to do the other side, that all of the load bars are even. So in this instance, I'm actually gonna just put all of the load bars that I have here at the back of the slot facing the rear of the truck. That way, all I have to do when I go to do the other side is just the exact opposite. I put them all just to the back of the slot on that direction as well, and then we're good to go. I have all the load bars in place on this side. They're fully tightened down. I'm gonna take my pile of hardware with me. I'm gonna go ahead and secure everything to the passenger side. And then we're done with the installation of our EX. Okay, all of our load bars are now tight and in place. Our feet are tight. The only thing that we have left to do is go around to every single one of your fasteners that we've already tightened down and just torque them to spec. For torque specs, please refer to the attached PDF in the description of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching how to install an up top Overland EX series rack. And if you guys have any further questions, please don't hesitate to give us a call or shoot us an email. Thanks so much, bye.